Hi everyone, welcome back to Tokyo on Fire. It is September 7th, 2017. Although it's not quite accurate to say that the veneer has fallen off of Tokyo Governor Koike, some of the cracks are beginning to appear. Michael, there are a couple of things that are going on in the background now. Some of her popularity is beginning to be questioned. Well, I, I don't know if it's affected her popularity ratings, but she's certainly getting a lot of bad press. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are a lot of things to uh, admire about Governor Koike. Her environmentalism is impeccable, and her, her sense of panic about the world in, in terms of climate change is absolutely apt in my view. Right. And, and her advocacy, her, and her color is green, mm -hmm. and all of her things are green for that purpose. And she calls herself Eko Yuri, Yuriko, uh, but Eko, ecology, as her, that's her Twitter handle. Mm -hmm. But then there's another side to her. Some of the honeymoon has kind of waned a little bit away, hasn't it? Well, th this, she has taken an action that is almost inexplicable in political terms unless she were really trying to pander to a very narrow right-wing fringe in Japanese political life. And that's the suggestion, right? That uh, because she is not willing to say what she has said in the past uh, in eulogy to the Koreans that were massacred in, during the Tokyo um, Great Earthquake of 1923, that somehow that means that she, she doesn't care or she, she's changed her mind on that. Well, I, or that she never ha was for it in the first place. But we need to backtrack. The, the, the core issue is, is that in 1923, on September the 1st, there was a massive earthquake here in the Kanto region. And in the aftermath, uh, paramilitary forces, military forces, police forces uh, spread rumors that the Koreans were going to try to take over the government, or the Koreans were poisoning people's wells, so they and they were dying. And these. And this wasn't. I mean, it's important to point out this wasn't an organized rumor mill. It, it only happened in certain. It pockets, happened in certain places, certain neighborhoods, but certain neighborhoods. But that certain that later there were there were certain provocateurs who were right. identified, and many of them, in fact, had a great deal of to do with Japan's later invasions of, of North Asia. Uh, but that these security forces uh, rounded up uh, Koreans and ma murdered them, or they were massacred by violent mobs that were by stirred on the vigilantes. Right. And th the general view is that somewhere uh, uh, from 1,000 to 6,000 uh, Koreans were massacred. Now, not only Koreans were massacred after the September 1st earthquake. Leftists, particularly communists and anarchists, were rounded up. A very famous uh, couple and, and their, their nephew, who was six years old, who were murdered by police mm -hmm. in the aftermath, in the chaos afterward, because those who wanted to get rid of these unsavory social elements had an opportunity right. in the chaos that existed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that there are all kinds of victims who were never killed by the earthquake and fire, who were killed directly by people who later helped Japan march to war. Right. Now that's the story, right? And it's a historical fact. fact. It's, it, it is it's, a fact. fact. It, right. Uh, There's the, controversy it, over the, how many people were massacred, but there was a massacre, massacre and it was It's a reported program. in the newspapers right. of the time. Uh, it, r scholars, both on the right and the left, all agree that this exactly happened. Mm -hmm. and in commemoration for the, the horrible injustice that took place, there has been a tradition in the governor's mansion of writing a eulogy to those who were massacred every, year, right. every year and sending it to a private organization. Okay. Now, it's not an official act, right. but it's, a, it's something that every governor has done. Even the anti-Korean, anti-Chinese Ishihara yeah, Shintaro right. did it every year, mm -hmm. and he was in power for a long time. Koike is the first to say no. And everyone says, why? Right. Well, she says, I'm responding to an inquiry from a member of the assembly who happens to be one of these right-wing nutbags who, who, who gets into what I call the Nanjing debate, mm -hmm. where they, they say, in, in the case of the Nanjing massacre, the Chinese say 300,000 were massacred. It was no more than 30,000. Mm -hmm. And you say, that's not what you tell people whose grand, 
parents or children were killed, that, that they were off by a factor of 10. That mm -hmm. argument doesn't fly. Right. But that is exactly the argument that this fellow made. He said, the literature of this private organization says 6,000. Mm -hmm. Do you really think it's 6,000? To them, Governor. And she says, well, I'll investigate. And she says, I'm still investigating. Mm -hmm. Ugh. And it's distasteful. 1923, fake news. Fake news, right. It's right. distasteful. But it's distasteful because she has a history mm -hmm. of anti-Korean activism. In her campaign literature for the gubernatorial election, she promised that she would cancel Shinjuku City's plans to That's lease right. a, a, school. A, 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 an empty school. There were not enough students to ha have that school open. But there, Koreans... In living in South Koreans living in Tokyo have only one high school to go to, mm -hmm. and the, their organization wanted to open a second one. And Shinjuku City, which is in charge of elementary and secondary education, that's what the municipal municipalities do, said, "Sure, right. we will lease to you this empty building." Right wingers said, "No, you can't. We, that has to be for childcare. Uh, that has to be for uh, kindergartens and uh, daycare centers for children. This building cannot be used for those Koreans." Right. And she latched onto that and said, "I support this. Mm -hmm. I think that that should be. This sh decision should be rescinded." And that was part of her campaign, uh, and a, a very much a prominent part of her campaign when appealing to right wing voters. Right completely hidden from most of us. Mm -hmm. Most people did not know that was part of her campaign. But it was obvious who her friends were. And, and, and for me, the, the stunning thing was to see the image of her, uh, well, the video and the image of her delivering her uh, victory speech the night of that she won the, the, the governor's election. She had behind her a tree made of leaves, green leaves, all, which were all... The, each on each leaf was a, a, a wish written by a supporter, right. and the one right here, right next to her head, was really weird. She was running for governor of Tokyo. Now, Tokyo is a metropolitan, cosmopolitan city of all kinds of people coming together from all over the world. I mean, it sells itself as a cosmopolitan world financial center of all kinds of people, and yet for this position, which has which has nothing to do with the nation, right next to her head, this leaf, very well, clearly written, politics of Japanese, by Japanese, for Japanese. Mm -hmm. And that's what's right next to her during the entire press conference. Mm -hmm. And for me, I said, what does that have to do with the governor? Right. Nothing. Mm -hmm. What does it have to do with a nationalist program? Mm -hmm. Everything. And especially with this history of anti-South Korean activism. It seems like that wasn't really a very smart move. I mean, the Korean population makes up not an insignificant portion, I mean, not as great as it is in Osaka, for example, but the Koreans do vote. They are members They don't of vote. They have no right to vote at all. And that, that's that in, no, in, in, in no place. And the, the Supreme Court has spoken on that. And the government- You're talking about the Zainichi? Yeah, the Zainichi, yeah. Okay. They're, yeah, they're, they're all citizens. They don't even get to vote in local elections. That was a question that the DPJ brought up and that the LDP would hold up and say, see, you are not of the body. You are not of the, of the, of the national ethos. You are actually trying to help foreigners vote in this country. Okay, that issue. No, they don't get to vote, but they do live here. Mm -hmm. And in the section just north of Shinjuku Station in Shinokubo, it's, it's Koreatown, right. it, it, and there are tens of thousands, more than 50% of the students in, at, in the, the local public schools have at least one foreign parent, mm -hmm. and most often that's a Korean parent, uh, or a pair of Korean parents. It's just they're here, and they've been here for generations. Why pick a fight with them? If you, you may have a fight with the South Korean government, but don't pick a fight with these people who have been here. Mm -hmm. Many of you have been here for a century. Well, it's an important step forward, I think, for her because this is truly plain politics. And for people who are watching what she's doing, this is a signal for where she stands on critical political issues. That's right. And that's the thing that... A little bit scary. That makes, that makes right. me worried about her whole 
Tokyo mm -hmm. first and now Japan first movement. Mm -hmm. That it's not about populist uh, seizure of power from the corrupt LDP. It's for, for basically- national movement. International movement right. of, of dog whistle, uh, mm -hmm. anti-foreigner, dog whistle, anti-Chinese, anti-South Korean politics that gets away with it because of this veneer of environmentalism and in, in this veneer of she's a very attractive woman and right. taking on the powers that be and isn't that great and look at all the great foreign press she gets right she studied internationally she has a went master's to, degree went, 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 from, went to Cairo University she's a, a member of the global women's movement and yeah that's true but an unfortunate number of her supporters are have politics that probably the right. rest of the world would not be very proud of not that we're criticizing her, but it's interesting what kinds of things turn up here on our discussions on Tokyo on Fire. You should stay tuned.